Hello and, how, and welcome to how to calibrate load cells, calibration adapters for load cells. My name is Henry Zumbrun. I'm with Morehouse Instrument Company. If during this presentation you see something or have questions uh, that come up, please feel free to email us at sales at mhforce.com or visit us on the web at mhforce.com or contact us via phone at 717-843-0081. Now the importance of adapters, pictured here as a shear web load cell, the importance is keeping the line of force pure, free from eccentric forces, is the key to calibration of load cells. You'll see here that two of the most widely recognized standards, ASTM E74 and ISO 376, address adapters differently. ASTM does not really address the various adapter types, while well, ISO does, and ISO 376 does in the appendix. And we'll go over that a little bit later. So here's a multi-column load cell. The first thing about adapters is to have a flat base. Have your Make sure your load cell has a flat base and then make sure you have a bottom plate that is flat. Here's an example where the bottom plate was not flat and loaded and the error was 0.114% at capacity and then a flat place, flat plate was used and the error became 0.023%. Considerable improvement. A flat bottom plate may be needed to improve performance. It is often not recommended to practice to load against the machine surface as it could be uneven or the base of the load cell could deform the machine surface. Pictured left is a Morehouse 60K rod and style load cell with a spherical adapter, top compression pad, and load cell base. Now, we talked about bottom pads. How about top pads? Well, top Different top pads, different different hardness of top pads will produce different errors. It will change the amount of deflection or strain on the load cell and produce different results. Here are tests that were run in June of 2017, and just using these two different two different types of top adapters, there was a difference of 0.307% at uh, roughly 10% of capacity and 0.263% at full scale capacity. Quite a large amount of error when we are looking for 0.025% at full scale. There are two points to make here. Uh, one is material with different hardness experience different amounts of lateral deflection under the same amount of load. This causes a different amount of stress between the block and the load cell. And then we deal with flatness and smoothness of the block is important as it will change the contact position on load cell. Uh, the assumption is our load cells, I have like an, uh, our big ones, our 600K has an R17 radius. So it is designed to be loaded exactly at the center of the spherical section. But an unbalanced or non-flat block can shift the contact point off center. As the stress analysis on the left shows, the small amount of shift will change the stress distribution. The key to use the same adapters in use as used in the calibration. So adapters should be manufactured not to produce off-axis loads. Flat on flat will produce additional errors as the material is never truly flat and side loading occurs, and flat on flat will not direct the stresses to the gauges. And if you look at this, what causes material deformation? It's basically deformation occurs until the compressive strength is less than the yield strength. And a steep radius concentrates the force over a smaller area and may cause material to deform, permanently deform. Uh, therefore, we recommend having a Morehouse compression top lock made at any load cell, because it's okay. It's okay if this top lock deforms, because it will deform to this load cell and it can be married as a system and you get 20, 25 years of use sometimes out of uh, these cells if cared for properly and everything else. So here's a picture of our concrete set. It's a uh, Morehouse with the top and bottom adapters. Uh, the 600K cell weighs 25 pounds and the top and bottom adapter weighs less than 40 pounds. So this whole set is designed for portability and performance. Um, these three load cells, a 600, a 60, and a 5000. And if you're doing E4 testing, typically you have a verified range of forces from 100 pounds the whole way up to 600,000 pounds with this kit, as well as low weight, so portability and setup becomes much, much easier for the technician. Earlier we talked about ISOs 376, and they recommend compressive uh, force, force transducers should be fitted with one or two compression pads. Here are pictures of those adapters. Morehouse has these adapters, uh, compression adapters. Here's a model of our cells. We have sold several of these. And the important part to make is the 100K cells and some of the other cells do require a bottom base plate for 
per ISO 376, so it's something to be aware of. Here's misalignment, um, talking about alignment, better alignment, you know, uh, keeping the, the cell free from eccentric forces. Well, here's a picture that on the right, the load cell is slightly misaligned. It's an S-type or S-beam load cell, and the error is 0.752% from just very, very slight misalignment. This is important uh, when you start looking at load cells and you start considering what type of load cell do I want, because S-beams are much less expensive, but they are not as forgiving to misalignment or side er side load error. So when a technician goes out into the field, it's very, very difficult for them to replicate the results and to perfectly align the cell. Then here's a Morehouse cell line with uh, misaligned, way misaligned here, as you can see, and the error is about 22 parts per million or 0.0022%. Overall uncertainty went from about 0.41 to 0.527 with slight misalignment. On the S-beam load cell, it went from 10 pounds to 86.6 pounds, so 8.6 times different when using an S-beam load cell. So the recommendation is clearly here, if you can do it, is to purchase a shear web load cell. It is the best, one of the best load cells for smaller force applications up to 100,000 pounds or 500 kilonewtons. Now what do we do about this alignment? So simple, we have alignment plugs and those alignment plugs are fit into alignment hole in a machine plat. And so someone would purchase both of these uh, adapters typically when they're using our machines in the lower yoke or in the stage beam in a dead weight machine or the PCM also has this where it takes an alignment plug and that alignment plug centers the instrument uh, from the bottom. And then the other things we have, we have the compression using a ball adapter, pictured top right if the machine has a ball adapter often yields the best results. If the ball adapters do not exist, a spherical alignment adapter, which is pictured top left, will help align the force. So this could be used for S-beams. This could also be used for shear web cells. From the previous slide, some load cells are just more sensitive to alignment and thread engagement issues, making adapters even more critical. Then you have this one that's thread depth. So we did this test. We use two different size adapters, one with a one and a half inch uh, and another one with a half inch engagement, and the output varied by 59.2 pounds at 10,000 pounds. There, the measurement was over a half percent on a device expected to be better than 0.25% at full scale, uh, 20 times that of expected. And then I have to ask, you know, how are your devices being calibrated? If you're sending these in without a to your calibration or serv calibration service provider without adapters, what are they doing? Because Right here, you have a half percent or more error. So the solution, really, remember those adapters, is to pick one of these adapt, pick an adapter, and always use it. Uh, have it the force measuring device calibrated with that top adapter. In this example, Morehouse spherical load button would be an excellent top adapter choice. Here's thread depth on a shear web load cell. Expected performance is better than a you know at at. Uh, capacity should be better than 025, it's 0.58 percent and 1.7 at 600 pounds. What we did here was we used these three different adapters and loaded them against all of them against the shoulder, you know, did rotation on the cell and got though a lot of different reading, readings, variation in readings from using these three types of adapters. So the solution, purchase and lock in an integral adapter, that's here. That's the best scenario, but maybe your load cell, maybe you bought one of these load cells here on the left and height is a concern. So if height is a concern, the picture on the right is going to be about four inches on a 10,000 pound load cell. If height's a concern, we have these adapters, which do not add that much height, which can keep the whole load cell under three inches for those tight, tight, tight fitting uh, places. So another thing uh, here, we have two pictures, two different loading profiles and you think the loading profiles will create a different result? You bet they will. So here's, it's important part here, 99% of the calibrations we do are here on the left, loaded flat against the base. I know a lot of our competitors prefer to load through the bottom threads. Does it matter? Well, yes, it does for you. If you are having uh, someone load through the threads and you're loading against the, ba the base, there's going to be an error. If they're loading against the threads and you're loading through their threads, it's not a big deal. So the important thing is to talk, to have the discussions, and for it's part of contract review to say, hey, are you loading it through the bottom threads? Or ask your cal provider if they're doing that, because if they're doing that, all of a sudden here, you're going to have a 0.012% error. And this is very repeatable on these type of load cells. So again, we load through flat. 
Uh, many other people load through the threads. It just ask your calibration provider. We find that most people in the field are loading, loading flat. So here's tension adapters. Tensile force transducers should be fitted with two ball nuts and two ball cups. That's coming out of ISO. Here's our adapters. They're fitted that way. This reduces. This will compensate it for about 0.1% of misalignment. And then what we do, we lean manufacturing, a quick change setup reduction. We believe in using several threaded adapters with those assemblies, those tension member assemblies, and therefore we can do different sizes. Threaded adapters can be used for different size load cells and tension. One set of adapters with a lot of threaded adapters, you can calibrate almost anything that walks in the door. If you do not have the adapter, we can manufacture these really rather quickly, and they are uh, a relatively inexpensive solution uh, to buying a whole nother tension member set just to do one thread size. Old adapters, talking a lot about different adapters, but then you have to talk about old adapters, and these old adapters can have issues. Above is a grade eight bolt that failed after about 350,000 load cycles. New adapters are designed for a life cycle of at least half a million load cycles, 50,000 calibrations, and failure at close to a million load cycles. You know, we're talking about that, and it's recommended that these old adapters be inspected and replaced if they have been used for more than 20 years, because you just don't know. I don't know of anybody that's really keeping track of how many load cycles they've been, or if they've been overloaded, or if they, you know, uh, they've been taking past yield or taking past, you know, to a point where they start to deform by somebody sometime 20 years ago that needed to calibrate X instrument that no longer exists. These are things you just have no idea. So you can visually inspect them, but that's not going to tell you if you have small stress cracks in the center or, or if they've been yielded. So recommendation is really to just, if you're unsure, replace them. New adapters are, you know, there's better, better analysis uh, all the way through now, uh, better, better materials. Uh, if you're sourcing from the right steel suppliers, uh, having them hardened to the right, uh, to the right hardness uh, will in, typically will ensure uh, two to one safety factor. If they are our adapters, we make them, uh, we harden them to ensure a two to one safety factor. So force machines, all force machines should be designed so that they are level, plumb, square, and rigid. You know, you can have the greatest adapters in the world and if your machine is not level, plumb, square, and rigid, you're not gonna get good results. So here's a picture of a thousand pound dead weight machine. And if you look where I'm highlighting here, these are these are the, the larger weights are on the top because when you contact the load cell, there's a tendency no matter how good that machine is, how plumb it is, how level, how square, how rigid it is, there's always a tendency on contact that there will be some swing. Putting the heavier weights at the top reduces that pendulum effects and, and further improves the results. So more examples of machine, here's a 100,000 pound Morehouse UCM. Pictured here, uh, the machine is set up so the standard, the reference standard, always stays in compression. Now, the advantage of always staying in compression is that reduce significantly can reduce your calibration costs, especially if you're going to NIST. Uh, its compression calibration costs are generally like 60, you know, uh, 40, 40, 60 percent um, of what it costs to have both tension and compression calibrated. And then there's, here's a 10,000 pound bench top machine. Now in this machine, the cells is used in uh, compression and tension. It's pictured with a traction dynamometer. Uh, this machine weighs about 160 pounds, 80 kilograms, and generates forces up to 10,000 pounds. To the left here is a 2,000 pound Morehouse cable Morehouse cable tensiometer calibrator. Pictured here is a AP dynamometer, but this machine, there are slides here and pins here. This machine can be raised to do a five foot cable, to calibrate a tensiometer with a five foot cable. So I know there are a lot of people that are using other methods to calibrate tensiometers. This one's safer. It has it has a safety shield that's kind of hard to see in this picture, but it has it. You know, the risk to the technician is a lot less and safety is improved. And speaking about safety, there's a lot of people that are using weights to calibrate 500 pound, you know, 250, 100 pound force gauges. This machine here on the right is our 2000 pound Morehouse PCM, which is designed to calibrate instruments really from five pounds to 2,000 pounds, and here's with the handheld force gauge that a lot of people use weights for. This reduces, eliminates the need for weights, allows people to do uh, small force calibrations on these instruments. They can go from 
compression to tension in one setup and save a lot of time as well. So if anything, if you have questions about anything on here, please do not hesitate to call us at 717-843-0081 or if you prefer to email sales at mhforce.com and if you want more information on our products and services, please visit us on the web at mhforce.com. Thank you for your time.